Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Man, I'm fired up tonight. I mean, I'm just, I'm just like fired up, you guys. Man. So, uh, I mean, we'll do, we'll do what we do. We'll start off with the review from what we talked about last week, and then we'll get into tonight's message. Um, I need to settle down though, so I can. I need to settle down so I can focus here. I'm like so fired up. I just want to take off and go, and I don't even know where I want to go. I gotta be able. I gotta settle so I can know where we're going. Okay. Well, I tell you what. Um, I did want to mention this uh, even before I get into the review. This was a review from a while back, but I saw this, and the Lord drew it out to me as though as something that we should just uh, re refresh ourselves on. And so, you know, we were talking a few weeks back about Proverbs four, and um, you know, you know, in Proverbs four, he talks about, he says, give, give attention to my word. He says, attend to my word, incline your ear to my sayings. You know, in other words, give, give, give solid attention to my word. Give, give strong attention to the things that I teach you. Give strong attention to the things that I tell you. Dedicated attention. Um, not divided attention, dedicated attention. And what I wanted to pull out of that was, you know, he says in there, let's just look at it. He says in verse 20, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now remember, the word of God, these words that are in this Bible, these words are health to our flesh. And not just the healing scriptures, <laughs> you know, all of, all of them. You know, Jesus said in John 6, John 6, 63, he said, my words are spirit and they are life. So their life to those that find them, health to their flesh. And then he says, keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence. So, so what I'm saying is we, we protect the word that we've received from the Lord by honoring it. We protect it by honoring it. And, you know, listen, that's true for anything. I mean, anything that you want to protect, honor it, and you will protect it. You see? Honor the word that the Lord has given you. And you'll protect it. Honor his presence in your life. And you will protect it. Honor his anointing in your life. And you will protect it. You will. But it takes our honoring his word to protect 
because we've talked about for several weeks, Mark 4, Luke 8, Matthew 13. The enemy is going to come and try to steal that word. We know that. I mean, that is obvious. But we protect what we've been given by honoring. You know, today, Stacy and I were talking about, you know, like being grateful and, um, and, and how, you know, when you're grateful, you can't be unhappy or depressed or angry or sad, you know, I'm reading this book right now and he's, he's, this book is about the book of Proverbs and, um, and just the, the wisdom that Solomon gave us in the book of Proverbs and, and just all of the instructions that he gave us for living life, for living life, you know, successfully in our, our careers or our ministries or our marriages and our families in relationships with our friends and our children. I mean, in every area. And he said, what Solomon says is really the secret to happiness. It's in being, it's, it's, it's being grateful. It's being grateful. You know, So, so when we're grateful, we can't be frustrated or unhappy or disappointed because you're grateful, you're thankful. And what I'm saying is, to me, that's part of honoring the Lord, honoring his word, honoring the revelation that he's given you. You know, <clears throat> I was thinking about this just a little bit ago. And the Lord said to me, what you are grateful for, you will connect to. You know, so in other words, being grateful is what will connect you to that, to that, to that thing or to that person to that situation, it's being grateful. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's being grateful that connects us. So what I'm, so let me give you some practical application. When we are grateful for the word, we're going to connect to what's in it. When we are grateful for God's presence, we're going to connect to his presence. <sighs> oh, man, I like that. I like that. I like that right there. When we are grateful for his word, we connect to his word. When we are grateful for his presence, we connect to his presence. Oh, that's powerful. Man, that's power. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's good on all that.
So let's let's remind ourselves what we talked about last week. So we I, boy, I feel like we talked about a lot of stuff last week, but I only have like two scriptures here um, in my notes. So, well, three, I guess three, because we did go to Galatians 6, 9, I think, too, didn't we? But in any case, so last week, you know, we were talking about uh, Mark 4, verses 26 to 28, about how, about how the seed springs up. Well, first it says that, that um, when the sower sows, then he goes to sleep night and day. He said the kingdom of God is as, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and then should sleep and rise night and day. He goes to sleep, he wakes up. He goes to sleep, he wakes up. He goes to sleep, he wakes up. I mean, look, you're going to go to sleep and wake up anyways, right? So why not sow some good seed into your heart and let it work while you're sleeping and or while you're waking up? <laughs> why not? I mean, why not? Why not do it? If you're going to go to bed and go to sleep and then wake up in the morning anyways, why not put some seed into your heart? To let it work on you night and day, 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 night and day. Because that seed and that ground knows nothing but to produce a harvest. That's all it knows. When, when, when you put anything into the ground, I mean, we talked about that. I think I, I talked about that maybe last week or the week before. When I used the, the bucket of soil and planted those popcorn seeds. Who knew popcorn seeds could like grow into something? I didn't. I guess they're seeds, so you I suppose you think, well, they're going to grow into something, right? I mean, I just, <laughs> well, we just always know them as popping into popcorn. But they're seeds, so apparently you put them in the soil, they're going to grow. And, and so anyways, the soil, it did nothing, but we put them in there. All the soil knew to do was to grow those things. Next thing you know, a week later, we've got, we've got grass or whatever that was, popcorn and grass or whatever you call it. It was like this tall coming out of the bucket. Why? Because all soil knows to do is to take that seed and to make it produce into something. You know, like I used the example, I believe, of our, um, our house back in Stanfield that we had a number of years ago where we were getting ready to sell the house. So I was fixing up the, the fence, the, the white fence that went all around the outside of the, the kind of the property. Or at least the yard of the property. and. And so I was replacing some of those fence posts and the boards too. But those fence posts, they were in the ground and you pull them up and the bottom of them is all eaten away. It's all rotten because the ground, when you put anything into the ground, it grabs a hold of it and it tries to make it produce a harvest. Well, the fence post can't produce a <laughs> the fence post is not a seed, but the ground doesn't know that. So whatever you put in the ground, it's gonna try to grow that thing. And so that's how we talk about being so aware of the thoughts that we think and the words that we speak and the things that we hear and that we listen to, because the things that we hear and that we listen to, the things that we attend to. In other words, the things that we give attention to, those are the things that are going to get planted in our hearts. Now, the challenge that a lot of us face is that we have, we have 
deep roots of things in our hearts that have been planted for a long time and have been deeply rooted. Could have even been stuff that you heard when you were a kid. And it never got rectified. It never got corrected. It never got changed. It never got replaced with the truth. And so now these, these negative roots, these negative trees are in our hearts. And man, they're producing fruit. Some good, some bad. And so our job is to get those bad trees out of our heart and get more good trees planted in there. Okay, let me show you something real quick. What's that? Okay. <clears throat> well, here we're already in Mark 4. I'll just go over a couple of chapters to Mark 8. And verse... Let's see, is that right? Oh yeah, here we go, okay. Um, in verse 22, and it says, and he, and he came to Bethsaida, and they brought uh, a blind man to him and besought him to touch him. He's like, he wanted to touch the Lord, wanted the Lord to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him and asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and he said, I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. You are a walking tree. You are a walking tree. You are a walking tree. <laughs> I mean, think about that. You are a walking tree. That's why, I mean, he says, he says, I see men as trees. I see men as trees. We don't often think of it, but but boy, the 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 stuff that we allow ourselves to hear, what we allow ourselves to see, what we allow ourselves to think about, speak. Whew. Those things get planted in us and they become trees. And so, like I said, we're, we're, we might have stuff that's been planted in our hearts since we were kids. That if we didn't get the truth in there and get the truth planted to replace that negative tree, that negative tree is going to continue to, to, to produce fruit in our lives. And so we had talked about that a few weeks back about how to uproot those trees. And we can uproot them by starving them out. We can uproot them by casting down those thoughts when they come. Not meditating on that junk, but casting it down. I like how Keith Moore said, smack it down. He said that he did that at the Southwest Believers a few years ago. And he was talking about that. He said, man, you get that negative thought coming, smack that thing down. That comes in, smack it down. Smack it down. I said, I like, smack it down. Smack it down. You know, because those are strongholds that, that are exalting themselves above the knowledge of God. Meaning it's, 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 it's holding a higher place in our lives than God and his word. So we got to pull those things down. 
cast down those vain imaginations. So back to Mark 4, 26, 27, 28. So like I said, look, you're, you're, you're going you're, you're gonna to go to sleep and wake up every day anyways. So why not plant some good seed in your heart and let that seed produce? Because the best thing about it is the seed does all the work itself. How can you beat that? The seed does the work itself and the soil and the soil. Just like we're talking about that fence post. And that fence post is in like all those fence posts are pulling out are rotten. They were rotted away because the soil is eating away at them, trying to make it produce something. And so that's why the, the, the state that our heart is in is so critical. And that's why Jesus gives us those four specific types of hearts. Depending on the type of heart, will depend on how well the seed produces in our lives. Man. I love you guys. I just got to tell you that. So, so the kingdom of God is if, as if a man should, should cast seed into the ground. And, and he goes to sleep and he wakes up night and day, night and day, night and day. And then the seed springs up and grows. Now watch this. It's my favorite part. He doesn't even know how. He doesn't know how. Why? It's probably none of his business. He doesn't care. All he cares is the seed produces. Look, when we would plant corn every year, we wouldn't sit there and say, okay, now we got to figure out here how this corn is going to produce for us. No, we planted it. We let the seed and the soil do the work. And we watered it. Now, for us, you know, we didn't have an irrigation system. I know a lot of farms do. We didn't have an irrigation system. So we had to rely on the rain. You know, so we had to, we had to hope that we'd get good rain to water the seed in the soil. And so you could say that's, you know, our part is to just make sure we keep watering the seed. You know, we just keep watering the seed. We just keep watering the seed. Just keep watering the seed. Well, how do you water the seed? Well, you just keep meditating. You just keep meditating on it and meditating on it. You don't, you don't dig it up. You don't, you don't cut it down. You don't go kick it over or stomp all over it by, by saying, oh, that's not working. Ah, oh, this is this isn't happening. No, it's not working. It's not working. Well, it's just like going over and stomping over the little blade that's coming up. No. So you water it by saying it's working. It's working. It's working. You water it by by just agreeing with that seed. Believing that seed's going to produce. <clears throat> Man, if you're believing to get set free from fear, you know, and maybe you're, maybe you're standing in agreement with, with 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So, so, so you plant that word in your heart, you speak it out, you speak it into your heart, you speak it into your heart, you get that sown into your heart, and then you just agree with it. You stay on it. Yes, hey, yes, I have not been given the spirit of fear. Fear does not belong to me. Fear has no place in me. Fear has nothing in me. I don't have fear. I have power. I have love. I have a sound mind. 
and you just agree with it. You don't, you don't sit there and go, oh man, there's that fear again. Oh, I knew I'd never get free from that. No, no, that's like, that's like stomping all over your, your little blade that's coming up, stomping all over the, the ear that's starting to bud. No. And, and that's, that's where the challenge comes in, is the watering, you know, watering that seed, watering that seed, tending to it, taking care of it, you know. Not stop over it by disagreeing with it. <laughs> no, that's the challenging part, you see. Because, man, it can be tempting. Because, look, guess what? The man that devil, he's going to try to come and steal that word. And so he's going to try to come and get you offended, or he's going to try to get you in strife, or he's going to try to come and get you to doubt the word of God. He's going to try to get you to come and speak the opposite. Wow, that's powerful. I'll tell, I know I, I'll tell you, I know I need to be better about that in some areas. I know that for a fact. And look, I'm not saying you have to be perfect because that's the one thing I think can almost, you know, you think, whoa, well, psh, there I go, I blew it. I spoke a negative word about it, or I doubt it. Oh, I blew that thing. No, hey, hey, no, no, no. Listen, here's what's great about God. He knows, man, we're going to screw up, okay? We're going to mess this thing up. We're going to screw it up. We're going to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. But, man, he's so gracious. And he's so merciful. That it, it, perfection is not required. You know, and I think that can trip some of us up sometimes where it's like maybe we're and you know, we prayed for something or we're we're trusting God to do something, you know, whether it's maybe it's using that example of getting set free from fear or or <clears throat> maybe it's healing in your body. Maybe it's maybe it's, you know, making more money, getting debts paid off, whatever. And and we can think. You know, because we got afraid or we doubted and we spoke a negative word about the situation or we didn't just stay all oh, only, I didn't only confess positive and I didn't only confess the word. So now it's blown up. No, no, man, this is not, it's not a perfection thing. It, 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 it's much more of a persistence thing than it is a perfection thing. You're, look, man, I'm not, it's not a negative confession, but the reality is you're going to mess up. I'm going to mess up. It's just a fact. Okay. The sooner you can admit that, hey, the easier it is because then you won't beat yourself up so bad for making a mistake. You won't beat yourself up so bad because, oh, I doubt it. Oh, man, I, you know, I, I, I spoke. I said it wasn't going to work. I said it wasn't happening. I said, oh, man, and you said the stupid thing you said. But, man, you just repent. Father, I'm sorry. Forgive me for saying such stupid stuff. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. I'm back on track here. I'm getting back on track right now. I receive my forgiveness from you, Lord. Cleanse me from all the unrighteousness. Wash me clean from any condemnation. And any guilt or shame from, from doing that foolish, stupid thing or saying that stupid thing and disagreeing with your word. I get back in line with your word, Lord. I'm back on your team, Lord. And you just keep going. Because, man, none of us are going to be perfect. Look, listen, I know you're great. You are really great but you're not going to be perfect. You're just not. Now, strive for perfection? Yes. I mean, listen, he even commanded us. He said, hey, 
be ye perfect as I am perfect. I said, well, well, that's a high standard. But God is so gracious and he's so merciful and he's so kind. That when you're not perfect, it's okay. He forgives you. He stays with you. He continues with you. And the whole thing is not blown up because you made a mistake or you made a few mistakes. Man, what's that scripture? Uh, it's got to be in Micah, right? It's Micah. You guys know the scripture I'm talking about, don't you? It's like, uh, let's see, hold on. It says, when I fall, I shall arise. In fact, there's two of them, I think. There's one in Micah, and I think one of them's in the Proverbs. So where's Micah? I think it's very right towards the very back. The Old Testament, I thought. There it is. Micah 3. Let me see if I have it highlighted here. Oh, uh, there it is. Micah chapter 7 and verse 8. There, well, I'll start in verse 7. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. And then there's a scripture in the Proverbs. I don't remember where that one's at. But it's in the Proverbs where it says a righteous man may fall seven times, but he shall get back up again. See, so it's not about doing it perfectly, but it's much more about the persistence. About, hey, look, you messed up. No big deal. You know, one of the things I love the most about God is that... <laughs> Out of all my mistakes, all the times I'm constantly screwing up and doing wrong and doing stupid stuff and making mistakes. He never condemns me. He never condemns me. Like, he just doesn't. He doesn't ever condemn you. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I love that. See, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And you are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation for you. I mean, I love it. We don't ever have to feel bad about ourselves. We don't ever have to feel bad about ourselves. Never. Because there is no condemnation 
to those who are in Christ Jesus. So, so no matter how many times you may have messed up and spoken negatively about the situation, no matter how many times you may have thought and meditated on the negative of that situation, don't let, don't let the enemy tell you because of that you've blown it and there's no chance now. Oh, you're too, you're too, you're too messed up now. You're too deep in that now. No. Hey, listen, man, is anything too hard for God? No. Nothing. 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 So, so the key. Get back up again. Just keep pressing forward. The persistence is the key, not the perfection. The persistence is the key, not the perfection. And so again, I just want to wrap this up here. Boy, I, I'm, I was not planning on talking about all this, but you know what? I believe this is, I know it's what the Lord wants us to do. So we're just going with it. So then again, 426, 27, 28, so the man sows the seed, he goes to sleep, wakes up, goes to sleep, wakes up, goes to sleep, wakes up, goes to sleep, wakes up. And then the seed springs and grows up. He knows not how. And so we talked about last week, hey, listen, you don't have to worry about the how. We don't have to worry about the how. And so you recall we talked about Isaiah 55 uh, verses eight and nine. Well, we also talked about, talked about verses 10 and 11 as well. But in verses eight and nine, he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. For my ways are higher than your ways, says the Lord. My ways are higher. You know, see why? Because the Lord knows how it's going to be done. We might not know how a situation is going to play out. You might sit there and go, Lord, you're looking at a situation you're in, you're going, Lord, I don't see any way this is going to turn out in my favor. But yet your word says that things shall work out in my favor. I don't know how, but see, he does. Because he sees the beginning from the end. See, <laughs> we're, we're in the middle of the situation. But he's not stressing about it. He knows the end. He knows how this is going to turn out for you. So his ways and his thoughts are higher than our ways and our thoughts. But that's why we have to get our mind renewed to the word of God so that we can come up higher to where he is. So we can think through the mind of the Father. So we can see our situation through the eyes of the Father. Praise the Lord. Um, and then we talked about Isaiah 55, 11, that that, that it's absolutely impossible for God's word not to go forth and, and produce what it's set out to do. His word always accomplishes what he desires it to do. Why? Because he's God. Because the word of God is backed up by God himself. Praise the Lord. So it's going to accomplish that which he pleases. And then the last thing we talked about was Mark 4, the 28th verse. 
for the earth brings forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. And so remember we talked about it's a process. So don't quit. And this is like we're saying with just get back up again. Just don't quit. The process. No. I will not be rushed. <clears throat> process we so we plant the seed in our heart we're speaking it we're meditating on it we're thinking about it we're reading about it and so it's planting it in there and it might start to produce a little bit it might just it might start to see a little bit of a change that's wonderful but don't stop there that might just be the blade that might just be that little bit coming up out of the ground But stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Because it might be the blade. Now you might be starting to see a little bit of progress, a little bit of change, maybe a little bit of freedom, maybe a little bit of healing, maybe a little bit of prosperity. But don't stop there. Because then it's going to continue to grow and produce more. And then you start to see the ear. Oh, and you start to see the ear. Now we're really starting to see some progress. But don't stop there. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Because then comes the full corn in the ear. And now you've got the full manifestation. You've got the full harvest. Now watch this. Now he's using. In this, in this couple of verses, he talks about corn. In, in the rest of the passage, he's just talking about seed that develops roots and then that grows up and produces. Now, here's what I want you to recognize. Um, The best part, now, one of the great things about how God has set this up with, with these trees, where we get these trees planted in our hearts, is that it's like having an orange tree, where that tree is gonna be there. Once that tree is planted and rooted in your heart, watch this, that tree is just gonna constantly produce fruit. So once the tree is there, you don't have to keep planting it. Now, you prune it a little bit, you take care of it. You know, you just keep, you just keep, you just, you just don't completely let that slip. You know, you, you still go back to it every once in a while. You keep it fresh. Like if it's 2 Timothy 1.7, okay, you're believing for <clears throat> freedom from fear. Well, okay, and then all of a sudden you break out, now you're free from fear. That doesn't mean you just never read that scripture verse again, or you never... You never think about the fact that you're free from fear ever again, but, but it just naturally produces by itself. So, so now that tree is just constantly producing freedom for you or, or financial abundance. Once you get that, that root of, of prosperity and that God loves me and he wants to bless me, and he wants to take care of me, and he always wants me to prosper and succeed. And when you get it into your heart that whatever I do shall prosper, then once that's in there, it, you just keep prospering. It just, it just produces on its own. You don't even know how, but man, that tree is producing, baby. I mean, that thing is producing. 
and watch this, it just keeps on producing and it keeps on producing and it keeps on producing because there's always fruit coming out of that tree. Oh, praise the Lord. There's always fruit coming out of that tree. But we just have to be diligent and persistent enough to keep at it until that tree is deeply rooted and is producing fruit. Oh, that's good stuff right there. Wow. Um, and then we ended with the scripture of Galatians 6, not 6, 9. Oops, went right past it. That says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In other words, as long as we don't give up, as long as you don't just pass out and quit, you will reap the harvest. So just stay with it. 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 Because you're going to get there. You're going to get there. I know there's sometimes it feels like it's never going to happen. I know sometimes you feel like, man, I've been doing this forever. Where's, where's the breakthrough? It's coming. It's coming. Praise the Lord. Okay. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 23. Verse 7. Well, <clears throat> let's start in verse 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that his, excuse me, eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats or his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with you. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So it's the image that we have on the inside of us that determines who we are. It's the image that we have on the inside of us that determines the person that we are. So if we, if we have an image on the inside of us of someone that things just never work out, or an image that they can ne you, you can never get ahead, or that you're always struggling, or that you're always lacking, or that you're always behind? Or if you have an image that you're not loved? Or if you have an image that you don't deserve to be loved or you don't deserve to be blessed? Then that's who you are going to be. So it's the image on the inside of you that determines who you are and what produces or what takes place in your life. The image you have on the inside of you determines what you do in your life. It determines what you don't do. Wow. So I'll say this. 
um, our inner image is more important than our outer image. See, the world focuses on the outer image. But that's not what matters. It's the inner image that matters. Look, you can fool people all day long. That doesn't mean you're really that person. I mean, you could, you could fool people into thinking you're rich, but you're still broke. <laughs> See? You can fool people into thinking that you're happy, but if you're miserable on the inside, what good is that? See, the outer image means nothing. Because it's the inner image that's going to produce what we have on the outside. If you, have an, if you have an inner image of a person that's overweight, you're going to be overweight. If you have the inner image of a person that's broke, you're going to be broke. So it's the image that you have on the inside of yourself that determines who you are and what you have in your life. Um, <clears throat> I thought this was interesting. I was led by the Lord to look up that word um, think, because it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Well, that word think, it means to split open, to reason out, to calculate, to reckon. Like, re like reckon, kind of like reconcile, right? Like reconcile or estimate. So, in other words, whatever you reason out, whatever you reason out in your heart, whatever you reconcile inside, in terms of who you are, that's who you are. Whatever the estimation is that you have on the inside, that's who you become. If your estimation is that you're a wealthy person, then you're going to become wealthy. If your estimation of yourself is that you're healthy, then you're going to be healthy. If your estimation on the inside of yourself is that you're loved, then you're going to be loved. Isn't it so simple? I mean, it's so simple. It's amazing. So we have to work on the image we have on the inside. We have to work on the image we have on the inside. Um, I heard uh, well, that's crazy. Hmm? Funny. Um, I heard Bill Winston say this like a few weeks back. He said, he said, you know, I tell most people, it, it's really not a faith problem they have. It's not a problem of faith. It's, it's an image problem that they have on the inside. That's why it's not working. It's an image problem on the inside. I said, wow, that is so true. It's so true. Because people love God. They believe God. They trust God. But yet, for so many, it's not working. Why? 
the image hasn't changed on the inside. The image hasn't changed. They're, they're trying to trust God and believe God for something, but yet it's incongruent with the image that they have on the inside. And you will, you will, you will never live a life on the outside that's incongruent with your image on the inside. You just, you won't. You'll, you'll, you'll sabotage it. If it's, if it's, if it's a situation that's, that's too good, that's above the image you have, you'll sabotage it. If, if it's a situation that's far below what your image is, that situation will be increased until it meets your image. Whatever the situation is, whatever, whatever that scenario is, it will be altered to match the image that you have on the inside. Because as you think, or as you estimate yourself to be on the inside, that's who you are. And that's what your life produces. If your estimation of yourself is a person that makes $50,000 a year, you're going to make $50,000 a year. If you're the estimation of yourself is a person that makes $150,000 a year, then you'll make $150,000 a year. If, if the estimation of yourself is someone that has loving, caring relationships, then you're going to have loving and caring relationships. See, so whatever that estimation is, whatever that image is that you have on the inside, that's what your life is going to produce. So, so what we need to do is we need to get our minds renewed to the word of God. <clears throat> we go back to this frequently, and in Genesis chapter 1, And verse 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Okay, so there is your image. Well, say this way. There is the image we are supposed to have. Oh. I mean, that's, that's the image that we are supposed to have is that we're just like God. And that's, see, now I see, <laughs> see, we can't see, <laughs> I mean, come on, man. God said, listen to me, you can't argue with the Bible. I'm not the one saying this. I'm not, this is not some stuff I'm making up out of the blue here. This is straight out of the Bible. Straight out of the Bible. This is what it says. Let us make man in our image. This is God speaking. And when he says our, he's speaking of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image after our likeness, just like us. Let us make man just like us. Let them have dominion just like God. 
Oh man, is our image so far below what it's supposed to be? <laughs> I mean, man, at least I know mine is. Jeez, man, I'm just getting, I'm just getting pierced to the heart right now. Wow. This, I mean, that's crazy. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, the cattle, all the earth, over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. And have, and have dominion. Have dominion. Have dominion. Have dominion as God has dominion. Man. Wow. <clears throat> and by the way, I just want to throw this in there. If you go down to verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made. Talking about man. And behold, it was very good. See, everything else that he made, he said, oh, and, uh, and it was good. And God saw that it was good. And God saw. But then he made man. And he said, it was very good. What is powerful? I'm just, I'm just, I'm getting so pierced to the heart about this right now. I can't even say anything more. Oh, okay. I've let that slip. Wow. Okay, well, can I have an awkward ending here? <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, I'm getting rocked, man. Okay. Well, Father, we thank you for this word tonight. <laughs> I just don't even know what to do here. Um, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Yeah. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. 
And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female, created he, them. Just, man, I just let the Lord minister this to your heart right now. It can't be just me. That, that's that's, that's got to be why I can't go forward here. He's touching your heart right now. 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 Just let him minister to your heart. You, you, <clears throat> you've let the image of yourself be so far below the image that he has of you. And he doesn't condemn you for it. He doesn't condemn me. He just wants us to have the truth. Wow. You are just like God. You're his child. You're born of God. You're born of him. You're just like him. You have his nature. Oh, God, you have his nature. Oh. The Lord is working on your heart right now. I'm not, I'm not leaving this until he tells me to move on. Just let him minister to your heart. Let him give you the right image. Let him give you the proper image. Allow yourself to see yourself like God. You are so powerful and you are so strong. You are so much stronger than you think you are. You are so much mightier than you think you are. You have so much more in you than you realize. (sighs) 
You have so much more to give than you realize. So much more to offer. You are destined for greatness. Wow. You have been born of God, born of his nature, his likeness. God is love, and you have been born of love. of love that never fails. That, that's your nature. Your nature is love. Your nature is love. And you were created to never fail. You were created to never fail. Wow. Oh my goodness. I mean, wow. Your image, there it is, there. Your image is Jesus. That's your image. Oh, man, I've let that slip. I think it's safe to say we're going to be spending some more time on this. <laughs> wow. Boy, do we need this. Oh, I know I need this. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I ask that as we continue to <clears throat> dig into this, and as we begin to just look upon you and your word, that we would get the right image on the inside of us. The right image, Lord. The right image. We don't have to try to be like who we think, you know, is that right person. No, we just have to be who you have created us to be. We have to be who you created us to be. It's the image that you have for us, not like anybody else, but 
the person you created us to be. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Um, you know what? I, uh, I don't know if I've ever done this, but this is, this is so powerful tonight. Uh, we're going to skip the, the sharing kind of time at the end tonight. Um, I just, man, I just sense that we need to just stay in this zone. So I just want to encourage each of you guys, just sit, take a few moments, and just meditate on this. That, that you have been created in the image of God, just like Jesus, full of love full of light, full of compassion, full of wisdom. Wow. Man, I'm just, I, I couldn't answer any, I couldn't answer a question if anybody had one anyways. I, I'm just, uh, wow. So, uh, so I'm just going to dismiss you guys. I bless you. I love each and every one of you so deeply. I thank you guys for being here, for joining us every week like this. It's just amazing to me. Um, and so we're just going to close it for tonight and just settle into the revelation that were created in God's image, his likeness, his nature. Be blessed. We'll see you guys next week. Love you.